Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our program today. You may know that Family Talk is a listener-supported program, and we remain on the air by your generosity, literally. If you can help us financially, we would certainly appreciate it. God's blessings to you all. Today on Family Talk. You are listening to Family Talk with your host, psychologist and best-selling author, Dr. James Dobson. I'm Roger Marsh, and today on the program, a good friend will stop by the broadcast. Her name is Kim Meter. Kim, along with her husband, Troy, began Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch in Bend, Oregon, back in the mid-1990s. This organization ministers to these heartbroken kids through horses, most of whom have been rescued from bad situations themselves. Kim Meter is the author of four books, including Hope Rising, which she and Dr. Dobson will be talking about on today's program. Kim is back in the studio with Dr. Dobson on this broadcast to share what God has done over the past 10 years at the ranch and how their ministry has grown to reach more hurting and lost people. Let's listen now to part one of their conversation here on Family Talk. With us in the studio now is a very special person and a great friend of mine, along with her husband. And uh, we have been working together in the studio for, I think, 14 years. Goes back to 2004, doesn't it? Correct. Oh, my. And uh, we're just so glad to have Kim Meter uh, in the studio with us. She is doing incredible things for the kingdom of God, along with her husband. And she is the founder of Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch. You may have heard that here on this broadcast in the past because uh, Kim has been here over and over again. And as long as I'm here, she will continue to come back and be with us. Um, She is the head of this organization, Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch, that ministers to hurting children and teenagers through, get this, horse therapy. On top of uh, starting and running this wonderful ministry, Kim has an amazing testimony of God's love and comfort through her own painful and difficult childhood. Kim and her husband, Troy, have been guests on this program uh, for a long time, and Kim is with us again today. And to give us an update on how God is moving at Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch, she is literally touching lives and changing lives there. Um, I hope that some of you will have an opportunity to go to this ranch. It is very inspirational. So, Kim, I'm so Happy that you've come back to be with us, and you're here in the studio with us today, and uh, it is just always a pleasure to work with you. I cannot tell you what it does for my heart to get to sit across the table in the studio with you once again. Thank you. The first year was 2004. Yes. Can you believe that? Yes. And you came and talked about a book that you'd written called Hope Rising. Yes. And I didn't know what to expect. I met you there in the studio, and you rocked our lives with what you (laughs) said. In fact, I remember it so clearly today. Mm -hmm. Uh, You told a story about a little boy named Adam. Correct. uh, Who uh, came to your ranch. Uh, Would you recount that? We serve a God that sets the curve, doesn't he? (laughs) We have so many children that walk up our hill in such unique brokenness. And everyone makes me think about the time in my life when I was that child, but I'm not anymore. And to see Adam come up, here comes this youth worker with this little boy who appeared to be about six. And he was just the epitome of sorrow. I didn't know anything about him when they came up and the social worker came to me and she said, is there any way that we can make a way for him to ride a horse today? And he wouldn't look at me. He wouldn't look at anyone. His eyes were down and and all the horses were in use except for one pony. And so I got in front of Adam and I knelt down on the ground so I could be eye to eye with him. And I said, hey, little man, I'm so glad you came to the ranch today. What do you think if you could ride a horse today? 
and he looked right at me. And I told him, I said, there's a little golden pony in the back of the ranch and his name is Hobbs. And I know he really wants to meet you. And at that, this little blessed lamb looked up in my face and he smiled. And from anywhere else on the ranch, that would have looked like a really sweet moment. And from my perspective, I was horrified. This little boy, when he smiled, all of his teeth had been broken. Those sharp, jagged curves of teeth that had been smashed out. And as he ran down the road in front of us to go greet this pony, I walked with his caseworker in silence. And I looked at her, and I was so angry and so hurt. And I said, is that what I think it is? And she said, Kim, it's so much worse than you know. Not only has Adam's father beaten out his own son's teeth, he gets drunk. And then he sends his son out in the yard, and he shoots at him with a rifle because he thinks it's funny. She said, it's amazing that he's even still alive. It's only by God's grace that he's here today. He was so traumatized that he didn't even talk, did he? Very, very little. At that point, he hadn't spoken to me at all. And so he ran ahead and, and went into the corral with the pony, and we brought the pony down. And and so we brought him to the hitching post, and I was helping Adam groom this pony, which he had never touched a horse before. And without words from him, I would just put my hands over his hands and help him hold a brush and then help him know how to brush the horse and how to clean the horse's hooves out. And then we put the saddle on. And I was telling Adam how to put a bridle on this pony who was little. Adam could do it himself. And so I had my hands over Adam's hands, and I was standing very close to the pony's shoulder, and I was showing him how to do it. And then I said, okay, now I'm going to back up, and I want you to do it all by yourself. And so I took about three steps back, and he just looks up at me, and this was kind of a scary moment. And so he stepped next to the pony's shoulder, and that's when this little golden pony swung his head around this child. And I've seen horses do this before. But what this pony did, I have never seen before or since. He snugged this little broken boy into his shoulder and held him there in the curve of his neck. And he didn't let him go. He was holding him so tightly that Adam's arms were down to his side and he couldn't raise his arms. And all he could do was roll his head back and look at me. And his eyes turned back and I could see that he was afraid. And he was looking at me like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? And I just watched for a moment, and I said, Honey, I think this pony's giving you a hug. I think you are so special. He sees something in you that is so special that he's choosing to give you a hug. This pony likes you. And you could see his face start to soften, and the little eyes are pinballing in understanding. This pony likes me. This pony Uh likes me. And I watched this little man wriggle his elbow up out from this pony's grip. This pony held him for almost a minute. And he was able to get his little arm up over the mane. And then he turned his face into this black mane on a golden pony. And I could barely hear words. Mm -hmm. And I kind of leaned in. And I could hear him saying, he likes me. He likes me. He likes me. And then he turned around and he looked at me with this jubilant expression. And he just declared, this pony likes me. (laughs) And it was the first time, perhaps in his whole life, that he had ever felt like he had been chosen and targeted with love. And that was the moment that the walls came down in this little boy's heart. In one moment, the love of Jesus Christ through a little golden pony crushed the walls in the heart of a little boy, and the love of Jesus went straight in like an arrow to a target. Kim, what is there between wounded horses and wounded children Mm. that typically bonds them together? Yes. And a horse seems to understand a child who is hurting. Yes. Horses are very special in this world in a way that we don't, as human beings, understand. We know that when Jesus returns, he's coming back on a horse. Jesus loves horses too. Mm. And of all God's creation, he has chosen a horse to be the one to carry him back into this realm Mm. of men. And what I know about horses is that their sheer size, they could kill us at any moment, anytime they want to. 
But because of their love and their gentle respect, they choose to carry us instead. And so every time a broken child or adult steps into the realm of a horse, they are trusting their life to that horse's care. And for good reason, because horses typically take very, very good care of people. Uh, Kim, that story touches me because you have built a ministry, the Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch, out of that concept Correct. that horses who have been abused are typically very able to identify with children who have been abused yes. and something happens. And that's what you have been building on for all these years. Yes. Our ranch was founded on equine rescue. And in the 22 and a half years that we've been doing this, we've been involved in the rescue of more than 300 horses. And those horses have survived unthinkable things. These horses have known violent, vicious abuse. When a child approaches a horse and sees those kind of scars and those kind of beatings, they know intuitively, oh, you know what I'm going through somehow. And yet here you are and you've made it. Please, please help me to make it too. Show me the way. I will follow you. And Kim, do the Child Protective Services often take these wounded, broken children and send them or get them to your ranch? Our ranch, because it's free of charge and has been for 22 years, every service uses our ranch because every service can afford it. The price is just right for everyone. And so almost all the organizations in our region that deal with youth and family use the ranch. And it is growing. It is growing. I'm, I'm really excited for you to share what's happened since we were here before. In fact, mm -hmm. very early on, I prayed for that ranch. Yes, you did. And I asked the Lord to do a very special favor mm -hmm. uh, on your behalf. Do you remember that? <laughs> I will never forget that. It was in 2004, and it was in June. And Dr. Dobson, you cannot know the wave that God sent out through your prayer. You said in this impassioned prayer, someone out there, please help these people to serve broken children in need. Please help them. And wasn't it nine acres at the time? Our ranch was not only nine acres, nine acres of rock pit. We own nine acres of stone. And we were keeping 30 horses on the stone. And we were serving about 5,000 visitors a year free of charge in a pit of rock. And we were invited to focus on the family to come and share what Jesus Christ was doing. And at the end of the broadcast, and I think you were even crying. I, I remember I couldn't even look at you <laughs> because I think we were all crying. You prayed this impassioned prayer. Someone out there, please help them. Help them have more space. And what I want you to know is that we serve an awesome God that answers prayer. It is not for no reason that we are instructed all throughout Scripture to don't worry about anything, pray about everything, pray on every occasion, pray at all times, pray without ceasing, pray on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to pray because there's so much power. And so often I've prayed for something for a day or a week or a year, and then I give up because I don't see the fruit, but make no mistake, God is at work. He's heard it. Yes, and the hounds of heaven have been released. And if we don't see their effort, it doesn't mean that God is not working. He's calling us to just pray without ceasing and trust me, beloved, trust me. And what I came to the studio to share with you today is that prayer triggered something that I want listeners to hear today. And that's that God answers prayer in ways we cannot even fathom. Well, tell me what's happened since that prayer. That prayer of yours went around the world like a wave of hope. And from that time, we were contacted by tens of thousands of people, hundreds of which were all saying the same thing. We never knew you could do ministry with horses and children, for the love of Jesus Christ, will you please show us how to do the same thing? 
If God can do that through you in Oregon, he can do it through us where we live. And through that interview today, now 14 years later, there are now 212 other ranches in the United States and in Canada and 12 in foreign nations that are basically a church plant that just happened to be at a ranch and just happened to have horses that serve children in need with the love and the, the redeeming grace of Jesus Christ. They're all over the world. How many acres are you on now? That's the beginning of the story is that the first wave of answered prayer was God raising up 212 ranches and many, many more in process. And that the increase was not our own personal property. The increase was worldwide through all these individuals that wanted to do the same thing. What I wanted to share with you today is that 10 years after you prayed that prayer, the Lord said, now it's time. And one night on our ranch, we have started doing what we call ranch fellowships. And what we've learned is that a lot of people have gone to church and have had some hard experiences or however they were raised for whatever reason, going to church is not a good fit for them. But coming to hear the word of God in a barn, well, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And so we started having these fellowships and what started out as just a handful of families now in the summertime is sometimes over 300 people are coming to our ranch to hear the word of God and to worship the Lord and eat a big meal together. And it's just this big, messy, noisy kids and dogs and games and and everyone coming together in this big mashup that I'm certain the Acts Church must have looked just like this. <laughs> Troy normally is the, the pastor and he's normally the one that speaks and it happened to be my turn that night. And on that particular day, a 4-H group had come from another state and they said, we had this bake sale and we earned this money and we wanted to come and give it to you for all the kids here that need to know hope. And and we wanted to come down (laughs) and we wanted to to help by serving this ranch with our own hands. This is a group of little girls. Mm -hmm. And so they stayed for fellowship and afterward, as hundreds of people are leaving the ranch, I'm sitting on the fence and kids, they're doing the shotgun questions and how come that one has a scar and how come that one's missing an eye and what's that horse's story? And finally, the sun is going down and you guys are from Washington. Where are you going to spend the night? And this little girl in the front, she was kind of short and kind of chubby and she hugs herself and she said, we're going to be camping and it's going to be really, really cold. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I looked right at her and I said, you know what, honey, I just think that a time is coming when our ranch is going to have the ability to have a place for when groups like yours come, you can come and stay with us. Wouldn't that be nice? And over this little girl's shoulder in this wave of people who are leaving the ranch, hundreds, one individual stopped. They were probably 40 yards away. I don't even know how they heard me. And they looked right at my face and I saw it. And they held fast. And as I hugged and kissed all these little girls and dismissed them into the twilight, that individual watched the whole thing and they were listening. That individual called me the next morning and said, I have to meet with you right away. And my first thought is, oh, dang it. I think I'm going to go to the principal's office. (laughs) Maybe maybe I said something that um, tweaked him a little bit or something. And I love accountability and I'm all for it. This is somebody that I know and I highly respect and love and And they were getting ready to leave the country, and we just couldn't make our schedules mesh. And I said, please don't jam up your schedule for me. Let's just meet when you get back. And they said, absolutely not. I need to see you right away. So now my gears are clicking like, what, what, why? And so we meet up in my husband's office, and they come in, and they're so excited about their trip. And they talked for 45 minutes about their trip. And by now, my brain is smoking and (laughs) gears are jamming. And just tell me why. Why the urgency? And finally, they talked until they were done. And then they said, well, okay. When I heard you say a couple nights ago that you needed more room, right then and there, Jesus Christ stopped me and said, you are going to buy it for them. And this individual reached in their pocket and they pulled out a real estate flyer that I know well. And they laid it down on my husband's desk and they tapped it and they said, God told me to buy this for you. And so I'm going to write you a check right now for $2 million and buy this ranch. 
of homes and barns and indoor arenas and outdoor arena and a hay field and a cattle facility and soil, water rights, irrigation, everything. And I'm just going to write you a check because Jesus told me to do this. God does what only he can. And when we pray and we listen and we do what he calls us to do, that's when we see his miraculous nature being unleashed. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the story is, is that ranch of 51 acres was acquired by Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch. Two years later, we were having a pray day and I was sharing with our staff all these ideas that the Lord had given. And I released them to pray for two hours over the property. Go do what the Lord's calling you to do. I felt like the Lord was calling me to pray over the two perimeters of the property and just do this Joshua. And so I went to the north perimeter and that's when I noticed there's a concrete slab in the ground. And on top of this concrete slab is a ancient stock tank waterer and the fence line runs right through it. And I could sense the Lord saying, just touch it, just touch it. And so I went over and I knelt down in front of an old rusty stock tank waterer and I put my hands on the rim and I could hear the Lord saying, this valley has served me before and it will do it again. What does that even mean, Lord? <laughs> Three days later, the neighbor that owned that adjacent northern property came to us and said, I'm selling my property and I think you should buy it. And five days after that, the Lord said, oh, by the way, I already own all of this and I am speaking through another individual to write you another check for over a million dollars to buy this property outright so that ranch is never indebted to serve children in need so that you can grow this ministry and serve more children at risk. And so your prayer went out in 2004. Instantly, the Lord expanded the boundaries through all these other similar ministries throughout the world. And 10 years later, he said, oh, and by the way, now it's your turn. Now I'm going to give you more because what I've entrusted to you, you've invested for my glory. Now it's time for more. And oh, two years later, now it's time for even more. This is the economy of God. You pray, you listen, you do what he says, and you trust him for the outcome. Keep praying because he's mightily at work, no matter what we see or don't see. So now the ranch is over 100 acres and is growing into all these food programs and giant gardens and cattle herds. And we have now a giant indoor arena that we're looking at saying, oh, my goodness, our ministry can expand even through winter months because we have a covered area to meet. And we're transforming one of the giant barns on the, we call it the West Ranch, into a meeting center where it's 10 times bigger than the barn that you met us in at Crystal Peaks really? on the main ranch. It is 10 times bigger. It will hold probably 500 people. And they're coming. Already they're coming. Oh, my goodness. How many teenagers and children are you reaching per year? We're still operating at serving about 5,000 visitors a season. And that right now is our capacity because we have a paid staff of between 25 to 30. And that's what our budget can bear at this time. And so we're just operating within our budget that the Lord has given us. And you still do not have all the money that you need. You're just taking what the Lord gives you and taking it as far as you can. Every day is such a faith walk and God just provides such amazing ways. Dr. Dobson, we've done this now for over 22 years and we have never had a fundraiser ever. <laughs> and that people call us and I've heard an interview and I've read a book and, and I talked to a friend and I went to this conference and I just feel like I'm supposed to help. And God is doing something here that defies the logic of men. Everything that the ranch is is through personal donations. And we just step forward in faith into whatever God provides on a daily basis. Uh, Kim, it's been a delight to have you here. Uh, tomorrow, I want you to go back and tell the story of your childhood and how okay. that led to the development of the youth ranch. Okay. I would be honored to do so. Thank That's you. That's a powerful story. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. 
What a moving and encouraging broadcast about the power of God's love meeting us in whatever situation we're in. If you would like to learn more about the mission of Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch, head over to today's broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org. Once you're there, you'll find out how you can get involved with their ministry or how to bless them financially. You'll also find information on how you can order Kim's book that was mentioned in today's broadcast. Again, that title is Hope Rising. You'll find all this information and more on our website at drjamesdobson.org. And then once you're there, click over to today's broadcast tab. Thanks so much for listening, and thank you for your constant support of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. You have no idea the impact your backing has on this ministry. I'm Roger Marsh. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow to hear the remainder of Dr. Dobson's conversation with Kim Meter as she shares her unbelievable testimony. That's coming up again on Friday on Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Family Talk is not associated with Focus on the Family.